Hello everybody, in this video we are going to fix all the issues with my engine, and I've already fixed two of them. First, I fixed the intake manifold, I made it much thicker, uh, which I'm hoping it doesn't blow up, but it's much thicker now. And then I read 3D printed a thicker chain tensioner. I did not add a guide, which one commenter recommended, and I will add that later. But I just wanted to get this done as quickly as possible. So I printed that out, and it is actually literally time to go test already. So I'm going to bring it out to the shop, and we are going to do some testing. Okay, it's time to test it again, although my fuel tank has decided uh, its job is not to hold the fuel, so it leaks gas. All the gas is just dumping out and it's not filling up the bowl. Should go on this one pretty good. That was definitely the one. Really good on this one, I'm thinking. I'm going to wrap it up for tonight because that is a lot of fuel and I really don't want that to catch on fire because that would be quite bad. All right, so here's my new fuel tank setup. I have a mason jar with fuel in it. This fuel is, has alcohol in it, so I'm not gonna use it, but it's ran through fuel filter down to there, and it might not look like it's that much of a difference, so it might not gravity feed the best, but I have a little trick up my sleeve I just accidentally discovered, and I will show you that when I seal this mason jar up. You know, if it goes on this one, I'm going to give it some slow motion shots of it running, see how that looks. Close enough. If it starts to go again, I'm going to give it some throttle. It was actually running and responding to throttle like really good. <laughs> All right, to try to combat the ignition manifold blowing off, I'm going to be printing with some Pryline uh, carbon fiber polycarbonate because it's super strong. Okay, I don't know how I didn't realize this before, but printing it like this right here, the layer lines are like that, so it's just ripping the layer lines. So with the new one, I 3D printed it so that it's laying like that. So it won't, and it's made out of a super strong filament, so I'm almost 100% positive that won't happen. Okay, so here's the new intake manifold. It is made out of uh, Pryline carbon fiber polycarbonate, and it's printed uh, diagonally so that it'll have much more strength. And the fuel tank, I think it's actually flowing fuel through it, but now it's time to go test it, so let's go see if it'll fully run now. <laughs> and there goes the... It was actually running, but there goes the crankshaft. Trial and error, that's what this is. Um, I'm going to have to remake the crankshaft. I'm thinking 19 millimeter thick steel rod, because uh, that, that's basically double this. It'll be three quarter inch. I want to try to keep the same bearing so I don't have to re 3D print the crankcase. But yeah, everything's looking good. The, this engine seems like it's really good, except for the crankshaft. I kind of figured even after the first break, but this one lasted pretty good, and I think it was might have been partially because of the vibration, and it's hardened, so I didn't like that. But let's tear this engine apart, and we are going to see what, how the inside looks. All right, so upon further inspection, everything seems fine except for where the crankshaft snapped there. So that gives me hope, and everything inside of here is fine. It's, I should clean up that RTV from the head gasket, but I think everything is just fine. So I'm going to switch over 
the uh, nuts that are in there to the other crankcase. And I am going to reprint the piston. I'm a little worried if it gets running for long enough that this plate will come flying off and mess up the head. So I'm going to 3D print it out of some Prilon carbon fiber polycarbonate. Uh, same stuff 110 Garage used to make a piston that ran for probably two minutes on their quad. So yeah, I'm going to print it out of that and we will assemble this engine. Okay, so here was my previous crankshaft and it snapped right out where I ground the flat spot for the flywheel adapter. And here is the new stuff. This is three quarter inch turn ground and polished steel rod, 1045 steel with chrome plating. So this is what I'm gonna make the new crankshaft out of. That should definitely work a lot better as it is quite a bit thicker than this. So yeah, gonna make the crankshaft out of it. And I also have this 3 8 inch steel plate which is bigger than the other one before. It's basically the same as this. So yeah, time to make the new crankshaft that probably will not break. I was actually a little worried about how well this steel would machine, but this stuff machines really, really good and it's supposed to be super tough. I mean, we're getting somewhere, but it ain't very quick and it ain't very easy. I'll tell you that much. Okay, so heating up the bearings and cooling down the shaft did not work. So I have to do this. I am being very careful, I have it on the outer casing, so I mean on the inner casing, so it's not actually damaging the bearings. But this is going really nice, I'm going nice and slow, just trying to ease it on there. And I might switch it around a couple times so it doesn't bend, so it doesn't get it too bad, but this is working great now. Okay, so I'm printing out the piston right now, but here's the new connecting rod, and I have all the holes drilled out and nice and smooth. So I'm going to print out the piston, put the piston on there, and then I'm going to put assemble the engine, but then I have to make a new flywheel. So I'll have to see what I'm going to do. I have an idea in mind, but I'll have to see if it works. Well, I'm, out, I'm melting down some window weights so that I can cast the flywheel. Got the flywheel uh, mold there. And I'm just waiting on this to melt. She's toasty in there. Ooh, it's hot just getting that close to it. Oh, it is very warm in there. There is molten cast iron in the crucible. It is molten inside of there now. It is basically completely melted in there and it is really, really, really hot in there right now. I open it up and I'm feeling it from like to 10 feet away. It's burning hot. Well, there's the flywheel. It's pretty hot, but I think it worked out good. It's a little on the short side, so it'll be a little bit underweight, but that was five pounds of cast iron. And then here's kind of what's left over. So I'd say we still probably, and there's a little bit left in the crucible. So we're still probably at four pounds, which is about what I wanted for weight. So yeah, I guess we'll have to see. And we'll, I'll have to wait for it to cool down a lot before I pull that out of there. Well, I have to say the flywheel turned out pretty nice. Only issue is I, I filled up the crucible to its max and it's still only a little bit heavier than that one. But when I add the old adapter to that one, this one's actually lighter. So I don't think that's gonna work. So I bought a six inch diameter chunk of steel and then that's half inch thick. And then I'm gonna weld a chunk of two inch th thick steel rod to the front of it. And hopefully that works better. It'll definitely be heavier. Okay, so I have the flywheel adapter, and well, I guess it's part of the crankshaft, but I, I turned it in my lathe, I used a steady rest up there, and I turned this down to 5 eighths of an inch, tapped it with that, and then I tapered that using my lathe, but the issue is, when I started the tap, uh, it was super hard to get started, so the top threads actually started at an angle, and it went in, but I have an idea for that, and I'm going to see if it works. All right, so what I'm going to try to do is just tap this basically really long homemade nut that I made on my lathe, and don't worry, I actually started the tap using my lathe, so it's perfectly straight, and hopefully that'll fix the crankshaft. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this thing that I, that I threaded, I'm just gonna thread it all the way on there and try to fix those threads, because as it goes to the good threads, it'll pull these threads straight, hopefully. Okay, so I think it worked because now, when I put the flywheel nut that's on there, and it's obviously gonna go in farther, but when I go on top, it's really, really close because it was angled more like that. So it's actually really, really close now. So I think that'll work. Alrighty, so I have that uh, steel round bar welded onto the six inch diameter steel disc, and I'm just waiting for it to cool down, and then I'm going to throw it in my lathe, hit the edges with an angle grinder while it's spinning to get it perfectly straight and smooth. Uh, and then I and then I'm ready to cut the taper, thread the end, 
and then it's literally time to assemble the engine and have it run. Oh my god, I did a very good job. It jumps up and down a little bit. I'm going to take care of that with an angle grinder. But dang, that thing is running true. <laughs> that is wild. Well, I've got the taper cut and the outside still bounces up and down though. That's the only issue. I wasn't able to fix that because even the only left hand cutters I have are high speed steel and putting that in there and trying to cut it on the left hand side, I actually ruined two of my high speed steel bits because high speed steel won't cut it pun intended um high speed steel is just not able to cut this when it's moving when it's that much moving out that far so i'll have to get a carbide cutter but i think it should work for now because it's not terrible but it's definitely not ideal bro five eighths uh dies and taps are no joke it takes a lot of force i had to use a two foot breaker bar to tap the flywheel and I have to use a one foot breaker bar with a 7 16 to tap the flywheel. And then I'm gonna thread it on there and that taper will, sel will self center it. So it's going pretty good. Flywheel's on there and it's self seated in the taper and everything looks good. Man, who designed this thing? This thing sucks. Who designed this? I can't put it in there. I'm setting the ignition timing based off of an Allen wrench to find top dead center since this doesn't have any markings that I can tell. So I'm using this to find top dead center. Okay, everything is set. Um, I have the ignition timing set about oh, five degrees before top dead center because top dead center is vertical. So we're about five degrees before top dead center, four to five. And everything is ready for testing. I just got to wait an hour or two for that to cure. I put more red RTV in there because of the threads in the head. But yeah, everything is ready and it all looks super cool now. I can pull it over. I am a bit worried. I have a fire extinguisher nearby for this run because I don't know what'll happen. We'll see. We'll see if she's got any life in her. I have a sneaky suspicion that when I reapplied the RTV silicone to the spark plug, I think I might have cut the spark because it's not, the spark isn't very strong. So I might have to take that out and then put it back in if it doesn't go. Let's see if she'll go. Actually, I should put a little bit more starter fluid in there. Because I don't know if it's pulling fuel yet. My timing chain. It was idling. I wasn't giving it, I was giving it throttle every now and then. My timing chain fell off. That was fun to set. Oh my gosh, that, that's going to be awesome. The flywheel is awesome. It seems like it's really well balanced. That ran really good. I'm betting that head's hot. That ran so good. <laughs> oh my god, that's going to be really fun to set again. Okay, so it appears to have lost its compression, which doesn't make sense because the piston shouldn't have a hole in it already. But I'm gonna see if it'll run again anyways. No, I don't think it's going to with how that sounded. I think it melted a hole through the piston already. Yeah, with how that looked, I think it melted a hole through the piston. Through the piston. Mm hmm yep. It's crazy that it already melted a hole through the piston because 110's garage lasted like uh, two minutes, but this one I don't have also I don't have a really good sense of time I don't know how long it was running for because my sense of time was sped up I Need people like you to subscribe to my channel and leave a like and watch the full videos so I can buy a milling machine I want to get monetized because then I can buy a milling machine So then I so then I can make a homemade aluminum piston and then a, a bearing bronze connecting rod um, but yeah, I think it already blew a hole through the piston, sadly.
Yeah, with how it's looking, that's what it looked like. That's what it did when my other piston blew a hole through. Yeah, it blew a hole through the piston 100%, but I'm going to try to burn out all that starter fluid that's left in there. Look at that. I'm going to die in like three years. <laughs> really smoky in here. Man, this thing is hot to the touch. I was going to go carry it inside, but I can't. It's, it's hot to the touch. Okay, so upon further inspection, the piston is actually fine. Um, what ended up happening is the valve spring retainer on the exhaust valve melted and it stops the exhaust valve from fully closing. So the exhaust valve is actually stuck open, kind of. Um, so the piston actually held up fine, but the I'll have to make a aluminum valve spring retainer because it melted and then got stuck and then caused it, and then it, it's caused it to make the exhaust valve stay open. But I'm gonna post the video here and the flywheel actually rotated a bit. That was top dead center, but it, it ended up rotating a little bit. Um, so I'll have to torque that nut up a little bit more. I did about like 20 foot pounds, so I'll have to go to like 40 foot pounds. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna post the video here and uh, that it all went pretty good actually. So hopefully in the next video, everything will run for longer than 35 seconds, which was that longest run. The, the combined run for those two at the end was 45 seconds, which is really good out of this. And actually the piston seems fine. It's just that the exhaust valve is smashed down. So I will make a fix for that and then uh, that'll be in the next video though. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe and comment and leave a like on this video. Thank you very much and I will see you guys in the next video.